All right, it's everyone's favorite time. It's tangent line time. Um, let's find some uh, equations of tangent lines. Without further ado, example four. Find an equation of the line tangent to the curve. What curve? Part A. The curve 1 half x squared plus y squared equals 1. The point 1 comma negative 1 over root 2. This is the equation of an ellipse. All right, so let's, let's plot it. Let's get a picture. Uh, see what's going on. That's the textbook. And say, all right, 1 half x squared plus y squared equals 1. It's a little baby ellipse. It's a little, a little stretched out to the... We'll stretch it out wide. We're specifically looking at the point one comma, negative one over square root of two. Great, that point is on the, on the curve. <laughs> that has been an error that has happened to me before, <laughs> but that point is indeed on the graph. Let's, let's close that parentheses. All right, so the equation of the tangent line, all we need is a slope and we're good to go. Well, the slope is just the derivative. So this is just implicit differentiation to find the derivative and then it's the same process to find um, these tangent lines. So really this video is just another practice video for implicit differentiation because once you have the derivative, tangent lines are the same as before. So first step was to ddx both sides. So we will ddx the left hand side. We will ddx the right hand side and go from there. The derivative of this thing, bring the two down, two times one half cancels out, and you just get x. We need to use the chain rule in the second part, it's gonna be two y times y prime. The derivative of the right hand side is just a constant, so it is zero. So step two, get all the dy dx's on one side, so we're gonna subtract out an x from both sides. And then step three, factor if necessary and solve. And we're gonna get that the slope of this graph is just negative x over two y, very similar to the slope of a circle. So now we specifically want the slope here. So this is the slope. Normally we talk about derivatives being slope functions, but this is not a function anymore. Uh, well, it's a function of two variables, but again, that's, that's not for calc one. Um, we're looking at what is the slope at this point? What is the slope for that x and that y? So we're going to say the slope at 1 comma 1 over root 2 is just going to be negative x over 2 times y. So it's a little messy. Well, dividing, we can just multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2 and get things cleaned up a little bit. That'll be the square root of two on the top, the square root of two on the bottom cancels. Now we just get this, which is also just one over root two. Yeah, that's interesting that it is. Well, I'm not gonna think too long about it. Uh, we'll know if we're wrong. So our answer is y minus the y coordinate equals the slope. I'm gonna be consistent and write it in this form times x minus the x coordinate. And we're gonna check our answer to see if we're right. So we plot that, y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. Wait, what, all right, what did I do? I did something, I did something funny here. I multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of two. Oh, it should be negative, right? Plugging in negative for the y coordinate. So the negatives cancel and we get positive. Like so. I love checking my answers. So let's change this negative slope to a positive slope. 
Hey, that's a tangent line. Great. Okay. Um, that's how we do it. And actually, you know, if, if we did want to look at the tangent line to the positive y coordinate, that would have had the slope that we were looking at. But there we go. Do 4b. Find another equation of a tangent line. But now look at this relation. y cubed plus x cubed minus 3xy equals 0 at the point 3 halves comma 3 halves. So again, let's graph it. Let's get a picture of what, of what we're looking at. y cubed plus x cubed minus 3xy equals 0. Whoa, that's cool. That's a point 3 halves comma 3 halves. This is what's known as a folium of Descartes, sometimes known as a leaf of Descartes. Uh, and it's a little loop-de-loop. Kind of neat. All right. The local behavior. Well, let's not talk about that. There's some cool things that we could talk about this, but not going to um, for time purposes. We're going to find the slope at the top of the loop-de-loop depending on how you talk about top. So to find the equation of the tangent line, we need the slope. To get the slope, we need the derivative. Um, this is not explicitly defined. And in fact, you cannot solve for y here. Actually, you might be able to here, but it's going to be super messy. We're going to do it with implicit differentiation. Cubic equations are kind of weird. There is a cubic formula, kind of like the quadratic formula, but way worse. Um, I don't think there's a quartic formula unless you have certain assumptions. Um, some wacky stuff. Google it if you're curious. Or if you just want to look at something and go, ugh. Or maybe you're already doing that. We're going to take the derivative of both sides. I'm not going to write out the step. We've done this a lot. The derivative of the left-hand side. This is the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. The derivative of x cubed with respect to x is similar. Minus, uh, let's go off to the side and use the product rule. All right, let's let this be our f. And this GR be our g. So the derivative of the first thing is minus 3 times the original second thing is y. Plus the first thing times the derivative of the second thing with respect to x. Okay. So this is, right, this is f prime. And this is f. And this is g. And this is g prime. Gonna have to use the product rule here. And you can either include the negative on the f part, or you can just subtract the whole thing and not include the negative. I think I usually like to include the negative on the f part. And that's equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. The derivative of 0 is equal to 0. Now let's get all the dy dx's on one side. dy dx, dy dx terms, and move the other terms that don't have dy dx's, this term and that term, to the other side. We're going to subtract a 3x squared from both sides and add a 3y to both sides. That's going to give us 3y squared times dy dx minus 3x times dy dx equals, I'm going to write it as 3y minus 3x. Sometimes we always like write the x's first and sometimes we like the positive things first. Uh, I don't think there's a really big uh, consensus on which way we would write it this way. And now we factor and solve. We factor out a dy dx, and we're left over with a 3y squared minus a 3x, and that's equal to 3y minus 3x, and divide both sides. You're going to get dy dx equals 3y minus 3x over 3y squared minus 3x. And since we're only trying to find this at a certain point, we don't technically need to simplify. 
But if we did simplify, we'd do so by factoring. So this is an optional step over here that I'm going to do on the next page. If you wanted to simplify by factoring, you could factor out, again, the only way you can simplify is by factoring. Factor out a 3, you're left with y minus x. And then factor out a 3, and you're left with y squared minus x. The denominator can't be canceled, cannot be factored. And so we just get that the slope of this graph is the y-coordinate minus the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate squared minus the x-coordinate. So even though it looks like we can factor again, or it looks like we can cancel because they're really similar, they're not the same thing and we can't. So that's our slope, and specifically the slope at the point, 3 halves comma 3 halves. Oh, that's going to be 0. All right. I'm going to write 3 halves as 1.5. 1 1.5 1 .5 minus 1 1.5 is 0. 1.5 1 squared minus 1 1.5 is some... I don't know what the denominator is, but I know it's not 0. I think it's 0.75. So we actually have a horizontal tangent line, which actually... Actually, that's kind of hard to see. It doesn't look like a horizontal tangent line. It really doesn't... Really doesn't look like a horizontal tangent line. <laughs> this is why we check our answers. Is there something wrong on this one? What's going on here? That's not that's not a horizontal tangent line. No shot. Horizontal tangent line would be like right here. It's not letting me. It'd be like right here. All right, this is an interesting week. All right, so let's just review our steps for our derivative. Derivative of y cubed is 3y squared dy dx. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Oh, we subtract a 3x squared from both sides. So we should have a 3x squared, I think. All right, so 3x squared here. It's actually the same thing that got me in the other one. 3x squared here, 1x squared here, 1x squared here, squared here. And uh, when you write that out, you're going to get negative 0.75 over positive 0.75, or just negative 1. Does the slope here to look like about negative 1? Yes, it does. <laughs> All right, a little bit better. That's why it's so useful when you're doing these problems to have a visualization if you can. Uh, you can spot silly mistakes like I've already made multiple times this week. So the line is y minus the y coordinate, one and a half, 1 1.5, three halves, however you want to write it, is negative one times x minus the x coordinate. I don't care whether you solve this for y. I don't think it's a very useful use of your time. So we can just write it like this and let's check our answer. Y minus the Y coordinate equals the slope times, oops, I tabbed out accidentally, times X minus the X coordinate. And that's a tangent line. Okay. Previously, I had the error of this. This is not a tangent line. <laughs> that is a tangent line. All right. Thank you, Descartes. We're enjoying your folium here. Leaf of Descartes. This cool little, this cool little loop to loop. All right, let's do one more, one more video here. Whoa, one more problem, and then actually after that, it's going to be one more video. All right, we got an application problem for you that I wrote out beforehand. Um, in a simple video game, there's a spaceship. And the spaceship that you're controlling travels, well, I guess you're not controlling it because it travels in an elliptical orbit always, whose path is described implicitly by this ellipse. It can fire missiles that target, that travel instantaneously along lines tangent to its path. So hold on, let's unpack that. Before we even try to solve the problem, let's unpack what's going on here. It's like an ellipse. Oh, I always forget which ones these are. 
which way which way this is getting stretched um if x is one here we're just going to graph it and 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. Yeah, yeah. So it stretches it the opposite way that you think it might get stretched. The 25 is next to the y, but that's stretching the x's. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to tell you guys wrong. So this is our ship. You know, our ship is just moving around here. Ship is moving around. And at any point, if we want to shoot, our guns are in the front of our ship. So it's going to shoot instantaneously forward so we're rotating because we're turning but the guns are shooting directly so the path of these lasers is going to be defined by the equation of the tangent line all right so like you know we're zooming 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 if we're right here and we fire we're going to fire directly vertically and our lasers are basically instantaneous let's not in, let's not incorporate a time dimension to this problem we're shooting real fast lasers. I will say they travel at the speed of light and we're not on that magnitude, on that order of magnitude. Anyway, so what's the, what, what are we actually doing? If we want to destroy an incoming asteroid at the point 8, 0, so here's our asteroid, 8, 0, this green asteroid over here. And we fire a missile when we're at 3, 8 fifths. So we are this white dot. We're trying to fire at the green dot. The question is, are we going to hit the asteroid? And it looks like it, right? We're firing on the tangent line, which is like, it looks like we're going to hit it. We guessed. We're, we're playing video games. We're guessing. But we didn't take the time to find some derivatives on our paper before shooting the laser. This is why, this is why in science fiction there are actually computers. That, anyway, never mind. I'm not going to really go into that. Uh, but let's see if we calculate it correctly. How do we see this? Well, we have to look at the path of our laser. The path of our laser is the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so we need a tangent line. We need a tangent line, we need a derivative. To find the derivative, we ddx both sides. So we're going to take the derivative of the left hand side. If it doesn't hit, I'm firing my gunner. 4x squared plus 25y squared equals the derivative of the right hand side. Okay. I'm actually playing a Barrow Trauma right now when I'm recording this video, if anyone's played it. I do have a gunner I could fire. Um, anyway, here we go. The derivative of that is going to be 8x. The derivative of that will be 50y if we were taking the derivative with respect to y. But since y is implicitly defined by x, we have to use the chain rule and multiply by dy dx. Technically, we could, we could use the chain rule here and multiply by dx dx, right? It's y, x, that's the only difference. But dx dx is just one. So we don't write that step. And uh, solve for dy dx. We're going to get 50y times dy dx equals negative 8x. Divide both sides by 50y. And you're going to get dy dx equals negative 8x over 50y. And again, you could reduce this. It's good practice. Um, two goes into this four times, two goes into this 25 times, and you get negative four X over 25 Y. Again, at this point, we've taken the derivative of two different ellipses. You could probably generalize the derivative of an ellipse, any ellipse, right? Replace those with A's and B's. It's going to be AX over BY. And fun fact, the derivative of the ellipse actually doesn't depend, the slope of the ellipse doesn't depend on the right-hand side at all. The right-hand side, by the way, now if we change this, makes it bigger or smaller. But the reason it doesn't depend on that, even though it looks like it would, 
is because it's incorporated already in the X's and the Y's. So the slope. And where are we looking for the slope? Well, we're this white spaceship. And we're firing at the green asteroid. Let me zoom in. Let's get this more intense. So we're looking for the equation of the tangent line at the point three, eight fifths. We're apparently in blue now. Is negative four times X, which is three, divided by 25 times Y, which is eight fifths. And we can just simplify this. That's negative 12. Um, 25 divided by five, which is five. Five times eight is 40. Top and the bottom are both divisible by two. Oh, they're both divisible by four, actually. Um, that's going to be negative three over 10. So our tangent line, let's just keep switching colors. It's rainbow time. Is y minus the y coordinate, which is eight fifths, equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate, which is three. Let's graph it. See if we have to fire Jesse. Jesse's our gunner right now. Um, y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. Oh no, Jesse! <laughs> Hold on, what color? We have a pink laser. So this is indeed a tangent line. Right? This pink is indeed a tangent line. But, ah, uh, you missed the mark. <laughs> it was close. It's real thin. Look, when you, zo when you zoom out, right, it's hitting the top. When you zoom in, the point's too small. All right, maybe if this thing had actual volume, uh, instead of just being a point, Jesse would have hit. All right, I'll tell him, I'll tell him he's out. All right, so that's, that's the problem. Um, if you want to give a mathematical answer, because we should answer the problem, right? The answer is, will we hit the asteroid? The answer is no. We don't hit the asteroid. Right? We miss the asteroid. And the official reason why is the point 8 comma 0 is not on the line. And it would be even better to just go off and show that when x is 8, what is y? You get that y is not 0. When x is 8, you're going to get... I don't, I, don't, I don't even know. Or you could do it the other way around. When x is 8, y is like 0 0.1. There you go. Now, you could also modify this problem a little bit to say, okay, well, if this point didn't work, what point would work? All right? Um, and if you did that, you just say, okay, well, we need... And then the problem gets pretty complicated. Uh, this is the end of the problem. This is the end of the video if you want to stop the video here. But if we want to ask ourselves what point would make it, you'd still look at the slope. Um, and then... Uh, what you do is you'd probably look at the equation of the tangent line too. I don't, I'm not sure actually. Um, so the tangent line, right? It's going to be Y minus some point equals the slope of that point, which is negative four X over 25 Y. I X minus that point. And then, so this has a lot of, so this has two unknowns, x naught and y naught. But we have two pieces of information. Um, right, we need, we need the point uh, 8 comma 0 on the graph. So on this line, that's going to help us find it. 
you could totally do this with a well-behaved function. I think this is going to be messier with a relation that's not a function. So what, these would be an X and the Y that you could use to solve for your X naught and Y naught. You get like zero minus Y naught equals negative four X naught. This is a more difficult problem. I wouldn't ask this problem, but it is kind of fun. But again, that, this the video is over. You can stop it now. And then, so this is going to give you the requirement for what X naught and Y naught have to be. And normally this would be enough for us to use information about the original, wait, that's not the original function. Sorry, not function, original relation was uh, 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. So normally this would be enough information, but it's gonna be a little harder because you can't really solve for y, but that's what, that's what you would do, right? Put these in x, y, not, x, not y, not. We have a system of equations. No, oh, you, you actually can do it. It's gonna be messy. Feel free to follow along if you want. Um, we can multiply both sides by negative one. Get that y naught is actually 4x naught over 25 y naught times eight. It's gonna make this a 32. Oh wait, maybe, I forgot about the y naught in the denominator. This is still gonna be messy. Minus four x naught squared over 25 y naught. Yeah, solving for this is gonna be a little questionable. We'll multiply both sides by 25 y naught. It's gonna give you 25 y naught squared equals 32 x naught minus four x naught squared. And then so yeah, one thing that you could do, you know, I'm committed, I don't care how long this takes. You could kinda, you can't really solve for y naught. And there's gonna be two answers here, but assuming we're moving clockwise, we're only gonna choose the positive one. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 25 and take the square root. We're gonna get one fifth times the square root of 32 X naught minus four X naught squared. And now we use that over here. You're gonna get four X naught squared plus 25 times Y naught squared. Oh, it actually would have been better just to solve for y naught squared instead of just y naught. Let's correct that error real quick. y naught squared is just um, 32 twenty fifths x naught minus 4 over 20 fifths x naught squared, and that's what we replace. And you can see that something kind of nice happens. It equals 100, but I ran out of room. The 4x naught squared plus 32x naught minus 4x naught squared. Wait, this actually turns out to be really nice. 32x naught equals 100. So x naught is just 100 over 32, which reduces to 50 over 16, which reduces to 25 over 8. Wait a minute. So we guessed three. And the actual answer, I cut myself off. The actual answer is three and uh, three and an eighth. All right, and when you do that one, if you change our point a little bit, three and one eighth, the Y coordinate becomes uh, what does the y coordinate become? Oh, no, all right. Then it's a little annoying to solve for the y coordinate because <laughs> it's not, again, so, solving for a y coordinate is annoying because it's an implicitly defined function. So we do have to find the y coordinate as well. So 25 eighths is the x coordinate. And we know that 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. So an X is 25 over eight. <laughs> I actually thought about asking this question to you guys. I'm glad I didn't. Uh, and you just solve for Y. So 25 Y squared. I'm going to use a calculator and make this a little easier. It's 100 minus four times 25 over eight squared. Divide both sides. And again, we only want the positive one here. 
So we divide by 25 and take the square root. You could definitely simplify this. Um, that's going to be your y coordinate, um, which should actually might act it should actually be something. Actually, I don't know if it is. The square root of one over twenty-five times four. I'm sorry, times a hundred minus four times twenty-five over eight squared. Is about 1.5612. Again, you could simplify it and get an exact answer. Which gives the equation of your tangent line to be y minus that is equal to the slope, uh, which we have to find. How far back do I have to go? The slope is negative 4 over 25y. Negative 4 times x. Divided by 25 times y. Times x minus the x coordinate. And uh, let's update our... Update this, right? 1.56124949996. So now, if we're firing the ship a little later, an eighth of a unit after x equals three, boom, we blast the asteroid. <laughs> I just made the whole video like twice as long. Um, there we go. We ran the numbers. We did the numbers. Uh, kudos to you if you're still watching this video. You really didn't have to, but uh, yeah, if you wanted to make the problem a little bit more interesting and uh, fair, a fair amount messier, uh, that's how you would do it. Bye-bye. <laughs>